Next, we'll take a look at Joseph Nee. We've all heard of Joseph Joey Nee. He's a convicted burglar, but his history with guns and crime stem much deeper than August the 22nd, 2022. Firstly, let's take a look at his injuries on the night as described by Henry Ryden. Mr Ryden is speaking in the court case against Thomas Cashman. He tells the jury Joseph Nee was transferred to Aintree Hospital from Whiston Hospital where he attended and was treated for gunshot wounds. He suffered an 8 centimetre laceration to his scalp, a small haemorrhage, a through and through wound in the upper right arm, a 5 millimetre likely entry wound to the chest, a fractured rib, a grade 2 cardiac injury, extensive pulmonary contusions to both lungs, a collection of air and blood in both chest cavities. Speaking about the last injury, Mr Ryden says, this was considered to be a significant injury, potentially life-threatening. Joseph Nee also sustained a 5mm entry wound in the abdomen, a through and through wound to the colon, a 3cm laceration in the bladder, a deep fracture of the coccyx or tailbone, and metallic foreign bodies within soft tissues and muscles. A medical report said he was expected to make a full recovery, but required further surgery. The report also said Joseph Nee may be left with reduced lung capacity, but it would not affect his ability to function. Next, we'll take a look into his criminal history. The earliest record I could find was in 2009. The Liverpool Echo reported that when Joseph Nee was 23, and he was living on Shield Road in Kensington. He was a trusted foot soldier from a criminal gang that helped flood the streets with Class A drugs like heroin and crack cocaine. His criminal activity came to light when the police seized 30 wraps and packages of drugs destined for the streets of North Liverpool. Joseph Nee got six and a half years in prison for his part in the drugs operation. Some news reports say that he was convicted again in 2011, when his brother was convicted for burglary. But on the newspaper reports from the Liverpool Echo, it says Jamie Nee rather than Joseph Nee. Another conviction I could find was in April 2018. He was convicted for 45 months for breaching his licence while out on parole. Nee pleaded guilty to two counts of burglary, two counts of vehicle theft, and various dangerous driving charges at Warrington Crown Court. The Liverpool Echo reports that Joseph Nee led the police on a 125 mile per hour chase from Church Lawton in Cheshire, but a police abandoned the chase whilst helicopters followed them to Hoyton, where the chase ended and Joseph Nee, Elliot Brew and Daniel King were all captured. Speaking of his conviction, Detective Constable Dave Newton of Cheshire Police said at the time, This is a great result and I welcome the sentences that have been handed to Brew, King and Nee. These men showed no regard for the victims in this case, targeting them in their homes, the place they should be able to feel most safe. On top of that, they then put the lives of innocent motorists at risk by driving dangerously and at excessive speeds on a number of roads across Cheshire and Merseyside. Thankfully, following great teamwork and a thorough investigation, all three men are now behind bars. A month before that sentence, he was also shot at by an unknown assailant in March 2018. This was mentioned by Mr David McLaughlin, who was one of the prosecutors in the trial against Thomas Cashman. Joseph Nee was eventually released from prison on licence. Two weeks prior to Olivia's shooting, Joseph Nee was shot at again on August the 8th, 2022. You think that's a coincidence? 
while Merseyside police have theorised Thomas Cashman might have been involved in the shooting too. As evidence shows, Joseph Nick was shot at with one of the same Glocks used in the night of Olivia's death. There are no reports to say that Merseyside police has ruled out Thomas Cashman as the shooter. This is believed to have taken place at a park close to King's Heath Avenue. The gunman who shot at Joseph Nee was driving a dark coloured car and Joseph Nee was riding an electric bike. After Olivia's death, Joseph Nee was arrested at his hospital bedside. But not in relation to Olivia's murder, but because he had breached his licence. He was sent back to prison and he is also due to be released within a few weeks or maybe months. It is believed that Joseph Nee did not cooperate with the police investigation into Olivia's murder. Which is no surprise since he didn't even get his friends to help Olivia or help her mother, Cheryl. His mates took him to the hospital and left the destruction behind. He is that unreliable he didn't even get called as a witness in the court case. Turning to the agreed facts about Joseph Nee, David McLaughlin says, As of August 22nd, 2022, Joseph Nee and members of his immediate family had their enemies. Mr Nee was the intended target. Mr McLaughlin describes an incident which occurred in March 2018 in which Joseph Nee was shot at by somebody. The prosecution do not suggest the defendant, Thomas Cashman, was responsible for or involved in the incident in March 2018. Next, he turns to Nee's previous convictions. Joseph Nee has the following previous convictions recorded against him between 2001 and 2018. Two separate occasions, conspiracy to supply controlled drugs and possession with intent to supply controlled drugs. A number of convictions for simple possession of drugs. One for burglary and one for theft. A number for aggravated vehicle taking and theft of or from vehicles associated with motoring offences. And one for a public order offence. Thomas Cashman claimed he was friends with Nee's family and that Joseph Nee said he didn't do it, and he gave names. But the judge ruled that these names that were given were ruled out, as they all had solid alibis. One of the men that were named was named Lee Hickman, who was at one stage arrested on suspicion of Olivia's murder at a flat in Huyton. But he provided a solid alibi in his interview, which was corroborated by CCTV and phone evidence. There's no dispute about this. The three other people named were Paul Hickman and Roy Hickman. The judge also noted they were in prison at the time of Olivia's murder. Anthony Hickman, another brother, was revealed by CCTV footage and phone evidence to have been in a pub at the time of the shooting. So he too had a solid alibi, and so did the other two. In the trial against Thomas Cashman, the judge noted, the defence argued that none of this excludes the Hickmans being involved otherwise than as the gunman. While that may be so, the issue for the jury is whether the defendant was the shooter. Evidence that others might have been involved in some other way does not assist his defence. Nee himself told police he did not know who shot him. He did mention his little argument with Lee Hickman and spoke of others who he had fallen out with, at one stage saying it could have been anyone. But Justice Yip ruled, Mr Nee has given varying accounts at different times. At no stage has he positively asserted that he knows who shot him. The statements made by Joseph Nee about the possible involvement of others are vague and speculative. They do not provide any evidence that someone other than the defendant was the gunman. In the circumstances, the evidence of things said by Joseph Nee does not have any real probative value.
So, it seems there are many reasons to hate Joseph Nee. He's been called a rat, a thief, a getaway driver, a criminal, and lucky amongst other things. He may have been wounded on the night of Olivia's brutal killing, and his injuries probably really hurt him. But nothing would be as painful as watching someone you love die like Olivia's family did. He left them when he put them in danger, trying to save his own life. His actions that day were only to save his own life, and no one else's. And that's been proven day after day since Olivia was shot dead. Joseph Nee was a coward to leave Olivia's family like that. He ought to be ashamed of himself.